Why won't my squashes just produce any fruits? Hi, I'm Ben, and together we're going to get to the bottom of this and what you can do about it. Okay, so the first thing to point out before we get started is that squashes and all types of curcubits, whether they be melons, cucumbers, pumpkins or zucchini or courgettes, produce both male and female flowers. So while they're on the same plant, because the flowers are physically separate, they absolutely must have the assistance of pollinating insects to transfer the pollen produced by the male flowers to the female flowers. You can tell the flowers apart by looking immediately behind them. Male flowers are attached to the plant by a simple straight stalk, while female flowers have a distinct bulge behind them. This is the ovary that must be fertilised if it's going to mature into a fruit. Now what tends to happen right at the start of the summer when the plants finally begin flowering is that they produce lots of male flowers but very few if any female flowers. And this can happen from anywhere from two weeks up to about a month. It's completely normal. What can you do about it? Well nothing other than wait for the plant to bulk out a bit, get more oomph behind it and then finally begin producing the female flowers, which given their more substantial size, require that little bit more energy to produce. If after a month or so plants are still producing only male flowers, or very few flowers generally, despite plants looking healthy, then the culprit is likely to be an imbalance in nutrients. Excess nitrogen will encourage lots of leafy growth at the expense of flowers, so either reduce the amount of nitrogen you are applying in your feed, or switch to a feed with a higher concentration of phosphorus, which should encourage more flowers and hence fruits. An organic liquid tomato feed is perfect and could be just the boost your plants need to get them flowering. Another reason behind poor or sporadic flower production is the weather. When it's especially hot and dry, plants like these can feel really stressed out. They'll be more interested in conserving their energy than throwing out more flowers and swelling water-intensive fruits. The solution, of course, is to keep plants well watered so they aren't left wanting. It's important to water deeply to make sure moisture reaches right down to the roots. If you find that the water runs off the surface of the soil, you can create a levee right around the plant to trap it and give it time to sink into the soil where it's needed. If you have the space, let trailing or vining varieties of squash sprawl out along the ground so they have the opportunity to sprout more roots along their length. They will do this whenever a node, from where the leaves emerge, touches the soil. More roots mean the plants can suck up more moisture and more nutrients, making them more resilient in the face of both challenging weather and pest attacks. It's worth checking the vegetable garden every day just to see how things are doing. It also gives you the opportunity to look for pests. Now squash leaves are particularly thick and robust, which means they're rarely a target of slugs and snails. The flowers on the other hand are soft and basically irresistibly delicious, making them an easy target for these pests and other nibblers like deer and rabbits. Do what you can to evade these pests particularly slugs and especially in wet weather. Squash plants produce both male and female flowers on the same plant, so in theory one plant is enough to ensure successful pollination. But from experience I can tell you that they produce so much better and fruit set so much easier if there's more than one plant. Two plants is great, three, four or five plants is even better. This way you'll have plants at different stages of growth, with hopefully a range of flowers at different stages. And in this way, hopefully you will have enough male and female flowers in bloom at the same time. In some cases you might have plenty of female flowers, but then the developing fruit never really gets underway, and instead just starts to rot at one end before simply dropping off. This is usually because the female flower just wasn't pollinated or wasn't pollinated enough. Perhaps there aren't many male flowers about to ensure a good supply of pollen, essential for successful fertilization and fruit set of the female flowers. Or maybe there aren't enough pollinating insects around to do the job. Including more flowers in and around the productive plot will help improve rates of pollination throughout the garden because they will draw in more insects. 
but sometimes you have to take matters into your own hands, literally. Look for a mature male flower that's just opened or is on the very cusp of opening. Detach it, peel back the petals to expose the pollen-carrying stamens, then gently rub them back and forth onto the stigma at the centre of the female flower. Do this earlier in the morning if possible, when the flowers are at their most receptive. And that's it. You can also hand pollinate using a fine artist's brush, and using a brush like this works best on smaller flowers like those of cucumbers. In short, don't panic. Where there's a will, there's a way, and I promise you, you'll get your squash fruiting one way or another. I hope this video has allayed any fears you might have of a fruitless summer. If you found it useful, give it a thumbs up, join in the conversation in the comments below, smash that subscribe button, oh and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future nuggets of information. And if you'd like to learn more about improving pollination rates, check out this playlist. I'll catch you next time.